Hello, 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 and welcome to The Long Road Podcast. The journey goes ever on with The Long Road. This episode, don't pick it or it'll never get better. Now, this episode is about the banjo, and it seems just about right that we start with a joke. Uh, anyway, there's, there's a, bit, a few more jokes later on. Um, this podcast from The Long Road is about our music as a band, our writing, our stories, our anecdotes, interesting people we meet along the way, uh, and who knows what else. Uh, my name is Chris Lydon, and I seem to be hosting the, the thing. <laughs> um, we've had a great response to our first two episodes. Thanks so much to everyone who has, has listened. Uh, particular thanks to those of you who's dropped us a, 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 an encouraging note, getting us to carry on. Uh, I mean, full disclosure, this whole podcast idea was... It was basically my idea. So I'm the one who's having to see it through to fruition. But it's great to hear that people are actually listening uh, and some people even admit to enjoying it. So good on you. Now, today we hear from John Humphreys, who is multi-instrumentalist extraordinaire in the long road. John plays banjo, guitar, resonator guitar, uh, fiddle, bass, percussion, squeeze box, just about anything you put in front of him. Um, he plays it, to be honest. Uh, and over the years, we've recorded with just about all of those instruments, um, but mostly in the long road these days. John plays banjo, guitar and resonator, or dobro, as I was introduced to it as. Um, the focus of today's podcast is the banjo. Uh, now, banjos, they come in four, five or six string varieties, apparently. Uh, and from the few I've held personally, they weigh a bloody ton. Uh, as far as I can see, they're made from an old cast iron wheel rim with some poor animal hide stretched over it, and then they're strapped onto whoever in your band runs the slowest, weighing them down. Then they just have to get on with things. Um, the banjo, much like the viola in the orchestral world, seems to be the butt of most of the jokes. Uh, now, even John, who is a self confessed banjo player and indeed enthusiast, he'd be able to rattle off a bunch of these jokes. For instance, what's the difference between a banjo and a chainsaw? A chainsaw has a dynamic range. Did you hear about the banjo player who played in tune? No, nor did I. What's the difference between a banjo and an anchor? You tie a rope to an anchor before you throw it overboard. You get the idea. Now, the banjo, or its historical foreigners, have been central to American music for centuries. Uh, and when John admitted to, the, to us that he was an all-right banjo player... You know, when John says he was an all right banjo player, we soon realised that, that meant he was a mean banjo player. Um, and the sound just fitted into the world that the long road was emerging into back then. It, the sound of the banjo just instantly transports you to a certain place in the world. Um, and I guess hints of, of time gone by. Um, by all accounts, the modern banjo has been around for about, I don't know, 150 years, something like that, uh, maybe a bit longer, 180 years, um, uh, and somebody pointed out to me a few months ago that had history taken a slightly funny turn around about 100 years ago in America, the banjo, rather than the guitar, would have emerged as the main sort of staple, central instrument of popular music. Imagine that if the 20th century popular music had had the banjo front and centre. I mean, I now delight in blowing my friend's mind by playing them a Beatles song and then saying, now, imagine that, but entirely on banjos. I mean, no doubt somewhere in the world there is a banjo orchestra covering Let It Be as I speak. And you know what? Good on them. Why the hell not? The banjo is just one of those instruments that I look at and I just wonder, how the heck do you play that? Um, four, five, six strings, and one of the strings is tuned, you know, completely differently to the rest of it. It's just an utter, utter, it just completely messes with my mind. Um, I, but to be honest, I get that with most, with a lot of string instruments. Um, the guitars, where you can tune tune the strings to different pitches and then you have to rearrange your brain so it's not just standard tuning. So you've got dad-gad tuning, you've got drop D, drop C, drop G. found out today about double drop D. I found out about abfab and Baghdad. Okay, so I made those last two up, but still. For me, as a musician whose instruments are set up one way and that's just about the only way you can set them up, banjos and guitars and the like, they just, they just blow my mind. It'd be like if someone picked up the black and white keys on my piano and rearranged them and then expected me to still be able to play you know a c major chord is it's just not how my brain works anyway on to the content of today's podcast john humphreys has been a musician in various places all over the world thanks to being in the raf uh, one story in particular sticks in my mind he was telling us about the time I think he was stationed in the US uh, and ended up joining an all-girl bluegrass band for a month's residency at a Las Vegas hotel. 
Now, John will tell you what other stories that revolve around that particular time of his life. Um, I, I hear I hear a rumour that John learned to play the banjo whilst in the RAF in, um, in a bunker during the Cold War, waiting for the whistle to be blown. Anyway, onwards. I'll hand over to John to carry on the banjo story. There's a couple of extracts from our new album, Reliance, you'll hear. And the super keen of you will want to go immediately and hunt down the banjo off our other new album, The Girl with the Rattlesnake Heart. Uh, now, just a word of warning, John does play the banjo solo in this podcast, so make sure you have your volume control at the ready. Enjoy! Hello everyone, I'm John Humphreys and I try and play whatever's needed on the long road songs to fill in the gaps and despite being able to play several instruments I do favour the banjo but why you may well ask and I can understand that after all there are many jokes about the banjo more than any other instrument such as what's the difference between a banjo and a Harley Davidson well you can tune a Harley now I've just listened to Kev's very professional podcast this podcast's going to have to be different from Kev's Kev has a perfect Radio 2 voice and presentation style that I can't reproduce. So I'm just going to talk about my banjo playing and hopefully I'll be able to convert one or two of you. Steve has asked me to talk about what drew me to the banjo and how it fits into the band. Now I'm the new boy in the band. A call from Steve out of the blue one day was quickly followed by a visit from Steve, guitar in hand, and we played a few songs together. An hour later I was on the long road to here. The pun is intended. He had been sat in my music room hiding from June and her list of jobs I'm meant to be doing today. But I'd rather be playing the banjo and talking to you. So here goes. So how is playing the banjo? A lot like throwing a javelin blindfolded. You don't have to be very good to get people's attention. <laughs> so why do I like the banjo? Well, I think that's a similar question to why do you prefer one type of music to another? And it's hard to answer. When I hear a banjo, I just feel good. Many years ago, I was just playing guitar. Then I heard somebody playing bluegrass banjo in a music shop while I was in Norwich. And I was hooked immediately. I'd never heard of bluegrass music before, and up till then, I thought banjos were only used in trad jazz bands. I can't tell you what I liked about the sound, only that I did, and I just had to play one. When I started to play it, I thought I was the only other player in the UK, along with the guy I'd heard in Norwich. In those pre-internet days, music was hard to find, as well as making contact with other musicians. Then I heard about a bluegrass festival being held in Edale, in Derbyshire, and managed to haul myself, my banjo and my tent over the hills to Edale. I couldn't believe my ears. Banjos were everywhere, and if you don't like the sound of a banjo, then imagine what a hundred of them sounds like. All playing different tunes, in different keys. No wonder there's so many banjo jokes. My style, of course, is based on bluegrass, but the Long Road has never tried to be a bluegrass band, so fitting the banjo into the lineup's not always that easy. But I'm always up for a challenge. Now, talking of a challenge, Steve's song Emmeline and the Three Cats Dancing needed an old time frailing banjo sound, something I've tried to do for years and never been able to master. It's a strange way of playing this frailing. You hold your hand in a fixed position like a claw and use the back of your nail to brush down on the strings. 
it's the opposite to the way I normally play. It's something like this. A couple of bars of frailing is about all I can do, so I've worked on a way of getting close to that sound using a guitar plectrum. Actually, this plectrum is made from an 8mm slice of yellow pool ball. Now I can get an approximation of a frailed banjo. Let's see what that sounds like with a pool ball. Now Chris, being the clever chap that he is, should be able to insert a sample here from Emmeline, just so you'll hear what the pool's ball's like in the studio. Gentle on my mind is one of those tracks that everybody knows, but it's not normally done in a bluegrass beat. But it's something that made it a lot easier for me as that's a style I'm used to playing. So it's back to Chris for a sample from Gentle on my mind, and please note no pool balls were harmed in the making of this track. You're waiting from the battles by the rivers of my memories, and smiling as a gem on the mind. I hope you realise that despite all the jokes, a banjo is actually a musical instrument. It's fully chromatic and therefore it's able to play any tune you care to mention. The only thing it can't do is play it quietly, or maybe that's just me. Anyway, thanks for listening to my ramblings. Now I'm going to hang back to Chris and he's going to wrap up this podcast. Hopefully you'll find out soon why he's known as the Bishop. Continuing the mystery about why my nickname is the Bishop. I mean, I mean, maybe if we commission a second series of this podcast for 2019, episode one will be called The Bishop Derobed or something suitably innuendo, and uh, I'll tell the story. I, I do kind of feel like the build-up now would be greater than the actual story, but uh, in fact, I know this to be the case. Anyway, that was John Humphrey's delighting us and expanding our minds and horizons uh, with the banjo. Uh, And that's it for this week's episode of The Long Road Podcast. Thanks so much for listening, for joining us on the journey. Episode four will be with you in two weeks' time, released on Friday the 26th of October 2018. Uh, And next time, it's my turn. I'm going to be talking about piano playing, um, some of the great pianists extolling the virtues of the piano stars of the southern states. Um, Subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcasts from. Hopefully you'll find us there. Um, You can check out previous episodes from The Long Road on vagabondphilosopher.com. Follow us all on Twitter. 
I'm on Das Chris Lydon. Uh, John's not on Twitter yet, but we're still trying to encourage him on board. Uh, Steve is on Steve Bonham zero one, uh, and Kev is more music M O O R E music. Um, search for Steve Bonham on Facebook to connect with us on there, and you can see our videos and other bits and bobs. Have a listen to full tracks from the albums on Spotify, and you can buy the complete albums. So there's The Girl with the Rattlesnake Heart, and there is Reliance, uh, and Steve's new book, A Beautiful Broken Dream, all at vagabondphilosopher.com. And remember, if you buy the book, you get a code that gets you 10 free tracks to download. So you can build your own album. And if you want to, you get to give a friend a code that gives them 10 free tracks to download as well. So you can spread the joy. Okay, it's time for me to finish now. Thanks once again for listening. And the journey with the long road continues in a couple of weeks.